What's going on everybody? Welcome to the sixth OpenCV with Python tutorial video. In this video, what we're gonna be talking about is thresholding with OpenCV. So the idea of thresholding, there's a lot of things that we can do from thresholding, but the idea usually is some form of extreme simplification of an image. So like what we did before, we converted to grayscale, that simplifies an image quite a bit. But further simplifying with a threshold means everything is either a zero or a one. Now there are some thresholds that uh, will be more than that. And then there's also like uh, gradients and stuff like this that we can apply to continue to have more than a zero or one value. But at the most basic level a threshold is either a zero or a one or a white or a black pixel. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Now I've got this sample image here. This might be one of the few images that you'll want to use the same one as me. It's a book page in low light and also the book page has a curve to it. Now the reason why I did all of this is first of all the book page is hard to read initially anyway uh, and then also the curve means that there's a different amount of light as we get over the image so not all of the image is in identical lighting. So you'll see why that's important here in a moment. Again, all the tutorials are hosted on pythonprogramming.net. There's a link to this specific one in the description, so if you want to use that exact same image, go for it. Now, uh, what we're going to go ahead and do is, first of all, let's, uh, you'll need OpenCV2 and, or CV2 and NumPy. And the next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is image equals CV2.imread, and the image that we're going to read is bookpage.jpg. Now, um, we're going to apply a threshold. So we're going to say the retval, and for now, uh, retval, we're not actually going to use it, um, except for maybe later on. But there's a form of threshold that we'll use uh, retval. Maybe we'll show it here. Uh, anyway, retval, and then the threshold uh, is going to be equal to cv2.threshold. And uh, we're going to apply the threshold on the image. We're going to set the threshold. This is a low light image. So any pixel value greater than 12, we're gonna say that's a, a one, I suppose, and that would be white. And then anything below 12 will be black. So that's our, our number. Obviously, if you had more light in this image, you would change that, right? So if this was a, let's say it's an extremely bright image with almost nothing visible, you would maybe have a threshold of, I don't know, 220. Okay, so, but we're gonna use 12. Um, and then the max val will be 255. And then the threshold that we're going to use is cv2.thresh thresh underscore binary. Now we'll just run a simple cv2 m show. Let's show the original. And that'll just be image. Then we'll call m show of uh, the threshold. And that will be threshold. And then cv2.weight key zero and then cv2.destroy all windows. Okay, so let's go ahead and run that. And here we have just a real basic threshold. Um, so in this case, we started with a color image. We never converted it to gray or anything. So we have this threshold where each value is a zero or a one basically. So of course we have a lot of red, yellow, and blue going on here. We also have some purple. So anyways, um, let's close this out. And obviously, you know, this is maybe in spots, but if, if everything was the same color, it would be a lot easier, <laughs> probably. So uh, that wasn't the most ideal. So then the next thing that we're gonna do is, um, you know, we read in the, the image and we're actually this time, let's, do, um, I'm trying to think if I want to retain these or not, but I, I think that, I, um, yeah, I guess we'll kind of retain them. So we're going to say grayscaled equals uh, CV, oops, CV2 dot CVT color. And they're great. We're going to grayscale, apply that to the image. And then we're going to say CV2 dot uh, color underscore BGR to gray. So now we've grayscaled and now we're going to call this a, we'll just, we'll just apply this exact same thing here. Uh, we'll just call it two, two. And instead of applying it to the image, we're going to apply it to grayscaled. And then we'll show the original one, but then we're also going to show threshold two and two and save and run. 
and there you go. So now we have a black and white threshold. But as we can see, um, this part in the middle where the, the shading of that page kind of goes down, now it's black, we, we can't read a thing. So that's kind of a problem. Now if we still, we can look at this color one though, and we can see that, okay, yeah, we can kind of read, and it's, it's, it's hard to transition, but we can continue actually reading throughout uh, with that basic threshold. So we're gonna close that. And um, now we're gonna work on a, what's called a, a Gaussian adaptive threshold. So that's what's gonna be adaptive based on kind of the region that we're in. So what we're gonna do is we'll make another threshold. And this one's gonna be, we'll just call it, we'll call it, we'll call it Gauss equals uh, cv2.adaptive threshold and we're gonna apply it to grayscaled. We're going to max val 255, CV2 dot, this is the type of threshold that we're gonna use, adaptive underscore thresh underscore Gaussian underscore C. And then um, from there, we'll make it binary with CV2 dot thresh underscore binary. And then we'll run, um, a 115 and one here and mm, yeah we'll call that and we'll go so oh we need to graph it so let's take this paste gauze and gauze run that and this is our gaussian now our gaussian um, and what we have here is basically a lot like this one, only it's even easier to read because we don't have all these like, you know, colors. And um, this one's probably the easiest one to read, right? Like despite the shadows and the book page and all that, we can still read this, there's no problem. So depending on, you know, what your, your problem is, you might use just a simple threshold, you might use an adaptive threshold, and then there's also this other like Ots Otsu's threshold. Uh, it doesn't really work well for this image, but it just, I'll just tell you it exists. Um, and an image of that, I'm just going to take it from the text based version of the tutorial just to save some time. And this would be, uh, we'll call this Otsu, O T S U. Uh, and then we can just put it under this one Otsu, Otsu. And as you can see, it made pretty much the entire thing <laughs> black over here, so it's not really useful. There's probably some parameters you could adjust and, and make it better. Um, I just didn't have any luck with it myself, but it exists and it may be useful for the situation that you're in. Just like there's multiple machine learning classifiers, depending on the kind of task you have, you might find that different ones work better. Okay, so that was... Um, just basic thresholds that we can apply uh, to an image or even a video. We, we could change this and have a threshold to the video uh, pretty much in the exact same way. In the next tutorial, what we're going to be doing is talking about how we can create a sort of filter for... Um, we'll, we'll end up going to the video feed, but we'll create a sort of filter that will find like a specific range of color. So an idea or a reason why this might actually be used is like a green screen or something like that. We can find that green screen and we can replace the background of that green screen, use those bitwise operations that we used before and we can replace the background um, based on the green screen. So anyways, uh, that's what we're gonna be talking about in the next tutorial, finding the range of colors. If you have questions, comments, concerns, whatever, uh, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions and until next time.